Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Metal Foes Zoo deck featuring Bao Baboon and basically Lone Fire Blossoms to be extra access into them. Basically, under the new format list with Rat Pier being at 2, any way that you can get access into an Invoker play is a huge asset for allowing you to just go straight into a Fusion Substitute play that is very quick, it's very seamless, and it's very efficient in how it operates. Uh, so Bao Baboon just seems to be one of the like best enablers for that. Any deck that has the capability of making a quick rank like three easily seems to just be really like good off in theory with uh, with how the Zoo format next format is going to establish itself. So this deck plays Terra Tops in it and Triple Lone Fire and Triple Bao Baboon. So it has nine different ways to get to uh, to just a um, to a rank three play, a one card rank three play. Uh, before you Pendulum Summon, but then this deck also has access to Arch Phoenix Centrix and Metal Foes Silverds, so it definitely has ways to make Rank 3s after you Pendulum Summon as well, because you can just pump up on those cards if you like have an Arch Phoenix Centric play to fuel your combo and all that sort of nonsense. But as you can see, I opened with Lone Fire, so I just cycled through the Lone Fires to get them out of the deck, popped the uh, Bow Baboon with a Metal Foes Scale, hand corrected a bit, and then started doing my Fusion Substitute play, which ultimately you end up cycling three cards through your hand off of Bow Baboon. So you get to pick and choose what three cards you have in your hand. You get to set Metal Foes spells and traps out of your deck based off, you know, what Metal Foes scales you have. But then you also get to draw one off Emerald, and then you get to draw one off a of Fusion Substitute. So ultimately, you just have a really, like, cool interaction with how this deck is meant to, like, operate. Because it allows you to dig for more combo pieces. It allows you to dig for defensive cards. Like, this deck is very sparse on defensive cards now that Kieran has been banned, essentially. So you don't get Bambuku access, you don't get Kieran access. Which those were arguably like the strongest reasons to play Metal Foes was because it's like the best deck at summoning Kieran currently in the format. But Kieran is being banned, so that has to basically change. So this deck has always been historically really good at generating its own defense. Um, and generating its defense being like making things like Full Metal Foes Alkahist or like I think that's his name, Full Metal Foes Alkahist? Yeah, it's either Metal Foes or Full Metal Foes Alkahist on your opponent's turn to suck up a monster, and then you have the zoo plays that are very easily supported in the deck, which make Dryden, which gives you another defensive line to work with, and then on top of that, you basically just get to draw five cards during the course of your turn. Now, three of them you don't get to keep, you have to meld your hand, you have to put the worst cards back, but that just works better for the deck, because that means that you can draw things like multiple Bao Baboons, you can draw things like your Rap here, put them back in the deck, rotate them out for a different card. You could draw your Metal Foes spells and traps and put those back into the deck. You can do all those sorts of things. And then if you're able to resolve a good Pendulum Summon for your Metal Foes cards that you dug for with your five draws, essentially, then you're able to make a Metal Foes Mithrilium play, or just any sort of Metal Foes Fusion play in general. You can go straight for the full Metal Foes Alkahist, and then you get to shuffle back Metal Foes Fusion and draw a card again. So you basically just get to do tons and tons of drawing. You can draw upwards of six cards, and you can definitely draw more based off how you want to build the deck. You could include extra copies of Fusion Substitute, and that would not only support the Zoo combo, but Fusion Substitute works for the Metal Foes cards as well. And you can start shuffling those back into your deck. So there's, there's multiple things that you can do. There's multitudes of options that you have available to you as far as this deck can be played. I think this is definitely like the strongest Pendulum option uh, for the new format if you're trying to implement Zoo, because it just implements itself so seamlessly. And then you also have really niche other interactions, like you can uh, you can play Sangin in this deck, and you can pop Sangin and search Max C. Uh, that's definitely something that exists. It's not in this build, uh, but it's something that I've discussed with a couple of people before, uh, because you could actually Pendulum Summon Sangin as well, so you could just do your entire Zoo combo off like a Bababoon or something and draw into Sangin, keep it, and then Pendulum Summon Sangin, and then with one of your leftover scales, pop Sang and search Max C. So, like, <laughs> you have a ton of different, like, capabilities and options that you could have uh, access to uh, as far as, like, generating your own defensive lines and all that sort of stuff and then just allowing your, like, play and board to be able to kill your opponent. Uh, but so as you can see here, I've got a dimensional barrier set that I drew into, and I've got double counter, and I'm specifically holding the barrier. I used my Alkahis play to suck up his Dante to lull him into, a like, a false sense of security as, like, I don't have anything, so I'm really going to lose to you trying to press boards. And if I flipped Dimensional Barrier at the point that I saw that he had a bunch of BA monsters, I would just be like, he would just start walling up with floaters, essentially. He would just basically just start putting like multiple monsters on the board. He wouldn't trigger my counters, which is definitely something I want to do. I'm trying to lull him into a false sense of security of he can kill one of my things and let my counters resolve because he's going to be able to play the game on his own like terms, essentially. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on here, is that I'm holding the barrier with full intent of wanting him to kill something, either the Dryden or my Alkahist. I have not used the Dryden's effect this turn yet, so 
Uh, that is something. Or no, I have used its effect, it looks like, because there's one less material under it. I believe I put a Tiger Mortar under it. Uh, I think I have used it already, but anyway. So once he goes to try and end battle phase, and after my counters have put my monsters on the board and put themselves in graves so I can recycle scales from my extra deck, I flip my dimensional barrier. This keeps his Dante in attack mode. This completes everything that I've wanted him to do for me. Because I do not want him to make Beatrice, but I can easily deal with a Dante and the Skarm that he ended up special summoning because he realizes that he's going to die if he does not put extra bodies on the board. He's going to be 100% killed flat out. But so from here, I'm just able to play my turn and my like stuff the way that I want to, essentially. I'm capable of just doing anything. I start my field, I start my turn with a full field of stuff. I can pop that Bismagear and go ahead and set up a search for the next turn. I can make Mithrilium at some point, and I got I've got tons of metal foes. I can either overlay those two silvers for a rank three, or I can just fuse them into Mithrilium. Uh, and I end up fusing them into Mithrilium here because I've got more than enough fuel in my graveyard. I've got combination full metal foes fusion. I've got a counter and grave. I shuffled. I banished one to add back a scale to my hand just preemptively uh, because I knew I needed like specifically something. I think it was like a high scale I needed or something. Uh, but then I ended up drawing off Emerald, and I ended up drawing like other cards that I could just use and stuff. But So I draw into three Terratom, uh, which I do have access into Pendulum Summoning as well. So I can Pendulum those, search Takatomborg, and Special Summon them, uh, and do stuff like that. So there's definitely the capability of doing a lot of different stuff after I've shuffled all of my uh, Metal Foes spells and traps that are relevant back into my deck. My Combination, my Full Metal Foes Fusion, and my Metal Foes Fusion shuffled itself back to draw cards. So just gaining free pluses, gaining free advantage. Uh, so Pendulum Summoning here, after I cleared his board... And uh, I search my Takatom Borg because if I wanted to fuse away into, like, say, Ori Halk with the two Volt Flames, I could have easily have done so and then just special Takatom Borg and made Totem Bird. And that would have been, like, a, a fine way to end this had, uh, had it not been game on board legitimately. But I'm able to just go straight for game on board by fusing with Mithrilium and bringing back the Volt Flame. Now... I don't think that's actually any more damage. I, yeah, I, it's not any more damage to do that. Actually, making the Oriel can bring you back the Volt Flame. It's literally the exact same amount of damage because it was a 2600 Mithrilium and a 2400 Volt Flame. Never mind. I'm retarded. I actually gained 200 damage off that because I'm literally swapping the Mithrilium for the Ori Halk. In my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm gaining 200 attack off the Ori Halk, but I'm losing 200 attack off the Mithrilium. But that's uh, just not the case. It is just 200 more with the Ori Halk. So that is why I made that play. Um, trying to do post commentary and relive my experiences and stuff is is kind of weird because I have to like try and justify my plays, uh, like usually like a full day after I made them, um, and like I'm really focused in the games. But during the during the like uh, during the commentary, I obviously have to look at the cues that I see on screen and stuff like that. But anyway, so my opponent makes a Dante, summons a Seer. He uh, he had a Graph and a BA, so he does that. Uh, mills a Skarm at some point, uh, which allows him to get a search, which is really neat. Sets three and passes turn with uh, with two BAs on the board, and he flips over Imperial Order when I try to do Arch Phoenix Centric to just just uh, feel out what one of those cards might be. But so I've got a Terra Top in my hand, so I'm fine with this. I can go Terra Top into Invoker, see if any of those back row are anything. Because if they are anything, then I'm probably going to just lose. Uh, but I've got Double Dimensional Barrier in my hand as well. But I drew the Brick Fusion Substitute, so like there's a problem there. So ultimately, I also drew the Dragoons of Draconia. So I drew like, I literally drew like five unsearchable cards and then one Metal Foe scale. <laughs> so I just go into my uh, into my Dryden play and I, just, I end up popping the Imper Imperial Order. I'm like, wow, this all resolved? That's so weird. Um, but so from here, I'm able to go Fusion Substitute into my Norden. And I arguably should have used the Eccentric first. But in my mind, I've got very few resources um, on my board. Uh, as far as like Metal Foes that I can use. And I've got to use the Eccentric to pop a, uh, a combination to get a high scale. And then fuel for like better stuff. But so I end up playing my Fusion Substitute. And my Norden gets uh, popped, which banishes my rat. So I just walk straight into a Fire Lake for literally four. Because he hit my Norden my Xyz and my uh, Eccentric, and then my Rat gets banished off the Norden leaving the board. And so I got Fire Lake in 2017, and as you can see in the chat, I say, I just got Fire Lake in 2017, and it actually just might not matter. And that's referring to the fact that I've got the uh, Dimensional Barriers in my hand. And I get really lucky off the Fusion Substitute, shuffling back my Norden, and drawing into a second copy of Arch Phoenix Centric. So I'm like, we got there, boys. I needed any way to get to a high scale. So it could have been like Arch Phoenix Centric, Painful Decision, or any of the high scales themselves. But Arch Phoenix Centric was 100% the best one. The best one hands down because it allows me to take a brick out of my deck in the form of combination and it fuels for an extra pendulum monster. The painful decision and just drawing a high scale, neither of those options did that. So it was just 100% like a whoa, I drew the eccentric moment. 
I was still like completely fine with how my game state like looked without drawing that eccentric with the information that I had on the field currently. But still, it was just such a good feeling to just be like, whoa, I drew the eccentric. That's insane. And so I'm able to pendulum summon, and so basically we're playing a floater war. But then in the end phase, when I try to go to end phase, he flips over Traveler, bringing back his stuff that all went to Graveyard this turn. His Graph, his Dante, and his Alec that was under the Dante. The Seer can't come back because the Seer is in his hand. Uh, but so then from here, I just go ahead and shotgun Dimensional Barrier. I'm just not dealing with this in any way, shape, or form. I'm not going to let him overlay into anything, because if I shotgun the Dimensional Barrier calling it Seize, like, there's no way he can make Beatrice, there's no way he can make other rank 3s, and he has no monster on his field that can get over my Dragoons and kill me. So, like, that's just the entire thing. So he Twin Twisters, and he decides to Twin Twister a really questionable thing. He, quint he Twin Twisters my set counter, which he knew was there, and also my Gold Driver. And I find that very weird, because counter can just add the gold driver back to my hand so it's almost like a twin twister for one um and so like it's almost like if you if you play twin twister against metal foes you either you always have you always have to commit to like hitting either the two back row that you like he knows that he knows that one is counter but the other one he doesn't know about or hitting both the scales and letting counter get one card back and just having to chance me draw a scale like you don't hit counter and then one scale because at that point you're literally just giving me a free card back by just allowing me to banish counter. Now, I'm not going to be able to summon a card out of my deck, obviously, but still, like, it just, it just, it establishes to where, like, I don't have to even worry about drawing a low scale. Now, I did draw a low scale here, which means I was like, yeah, amazing. I get to, I get to just pendulum summon the, uh, the, the, uh, big one out now. I get to pendulum out the bigger one, being the gold driver. So that's neat. Uh, but otherwise, like, it just, it just, it was really questionable for that Twin Twister to be what it was, especially since if he had hit my other back row, he would have hit the other Dimensional Barrier, <laughs> and that would have been, like, really crippling, um, because, like, he could have hit Counter and Barrier, and then that would have just been like, okay, so I'm not gonna, like, be able to fall back on that Barrier for the next turn, and then if he had hit both of my scales, I would have had to draw a low scale and be able to counter back, or not even a low scale, actually, I would have had to draw a scale. Um, which there actually are a surprising few amount in my deck. There's only like 13 Metal Foes scales, um, and then there's uh, the three Arch Phoenix Centrics, uh, which I think are like the only actual like real Pendulum monsters that go in my scales that are actually like real scales. So um, so it, it would have been it would have been interesting uh, to say the least because he's already seen like a few scales out of my uh, out of my deck already. So the the chances are kind of low, but they're still there. Uh, but I still just don't agree with the Twin Twister hitting counter and a scale because then it's like he literally Twin Twistered for one. Um, <laughs> But I, I digress. So I'm making my plays. I'm making my Mithrilium stuff. I bounce his Dante, and I do all this nonsense, uh, leaving leaving Mithrilium on the board, um, and having the second barrier still set. And I believe the other card that's set is um, I can't remember. I really would love for my for my uh, in-game self to hover over it. It's either a counter or it's a full Metal Foes fusion. I can't remember what it is. But at this point, I don't really care about his board. He doesn't have five on board anymore, or four or five, with a Seer in hand that I know about. Um, so I'm perfectly fine not shotgunning the um, the dimensional barrier. Okay, so it was a counter, and so he mills off Dante um, after he makes it, and then he mills a cow cab, and cow cab bounces the counter. He's just so afraid of counter, he just apparently can't kill me through counter, so he keeps putting the counter back in my hand. But so I just go ahead and flip dimensional barrier uh, for the uh, for the Xyz so that that Dante can't beat over anything, so it loses its attack value, it stays in the tag mode, and uh, like there's no way that he could possibly like cheese me by like going into like multiple different things and allowing himself to make like a Virgil because the fact is like I only was afraid of like Virgil during this situation because Virgil is still a really good card even though it's really hard to like make it um, but it's actually not even that hard to make it it's just the cards I knew that he had access to could have made Virgil <laughs> um, and so like uh, I just I didn't want him to have like person like more access into stuff um, so like that that would have been a huge thing like he could have virgil me the previous turn and that's one of the reasons why i shotgunned the barrier was because i didn't want him to make beatrice and i didn't want him to have access into any way to make virgil and being able to overlay with that uh with that graph would have been how he would have done that um so like he would have been able to special a tuner out of that and i don't want him to overlay period so that was why the barrier was shotgunned but so from here i'm just doing my plays being able to pendulum summon doing all my nonsense uh, I bounce his set because I have no idea what it is. I've like I've got an educated like guess that it's like Farfa, um, and so I just don't want to get Farfa so I can actually just punch over his Dante. I'm okay with him like getting a card back off the Dante. I have no problems with that at all because I've got game on board. Um, so like there's there's no reason for me to even worry about that in any way, shape, or form. Now here, 
the game is won. The game is mine. As you can see, he's only at 6,600 life, and on field, I've got 6,600. I've got 28 plus 26 plus 1,800. I've got more than that. This is actually closer to 8,000 than it is closer to 6,000, and I've got basically the game wrapped up and locked up in my favor. And so, unfortunately, his Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro <laughs> crashed. He lost connection. Uh, but so the game is clear-cut in my victory, essentially, because I am attacking for game literally right now. Uh, for some reason, his Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro just didn't like the interaction that Dante plus Cagna had together, um, and it crashed for him. Uh, but so, like, it's I've got game on board right here, so it's it's really easy and clear-cut for me to use this, because I've literally, my next action is go into battle phase and attack for game, so like it's it's very simple. Now I do really like the Metal Foes deck with the uh, new restrictions on Zoo. I think it's like probably one of the better hybrids because of, like I said, any way to make Invoker puts you really far ahead as far as what you're capable of doing with simple fusion substitute plays because it gives you that extra exceeds on the board, gives you extra resources. So decks that have access into rank three pools like Invoker very easily, like BA, like Phantom Knights, like Metal Foes with all the new stuff like with Balbaboon and stuff like that just screams. That is very good for the new uh, the new zoo engine to go into it, in my opinion, and that's what I've been experimenting a lot with recently. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I'm actually really curious about that. But be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details over on Patreon. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they have done business with me so far. But definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.